We all grew up knowing a lot about astronomy. We all grew up knowing that we inhabit a planet which goes round the sun, that the sun is a huge ball of hot gas with a nuclear reaction inside it, that the night sky is full of vast numbers of stars which are also great balls of gas with nuclear fires inside them, that there are galaxies huge clouds of millions upon millions of stars at distances so great that the light takes thousands of millions of years to reach us. And since light travels very fast, that means they're thousands of millions of millions of miles away, or kilometres away, depending on where you grew up. And there are lots of other things we learned in school, from the radio, from television, from books, from the movies. But we might ask, how did the people who told us all these wonderful things know? Well, the astronomers tell us they know because of what they see through their huge telescopes. One of the most famous astronomers of all time, Professor Sir Arthur Eddington, the astronomer reputed to have proved Einstein's relativity by astronomical measurements, said... For the reader resolved to eschew theory and admit only definite observational facts. All astronomy books are banned. There are no purely observational facts about the heavenly bodies. It is only by theory that astronomical measurements are translated into knowledge of a universe outside. Oh, and how do we know if the theory is true or not? Good question. There are astronomers who have dared to admit that there may be problems with the current astronomical theories. John Maddox, for example, editor of the prestigious scientific journal Nature, he wrote an editorial about one of the most famous of the astronomical theories, the Big Bang, in which he said, In all respects, Save that of convenience, this view of the origin of the universe is thoroughly unsatisfactory. And W. R. Corliss, the editor of Discover, noted, As the structures of the cosmos and the subatomic world become more and more foreign to everyday experience, we have to ask whether such bizarre constructions may not be the consequence of incorrect physical theories, such as relativity, the Big Bang hypothesis, and so on. Leif Robinson, in the Astronomical Encyclopedia, pointed out three major problems with current theories and noted that trilogy was not designed to throw cold water on the state of astronomical knowledge. Rather, it attempts to focus on a problem, how to assimilate ever-growing tidal waves of disparate information. Disparate information is a tactful way of saying evidence which disproves the accepted theories. And ever-growing tidal waves are not just little details. Robinson raises a very interesting point. He doesn't dare to throw cold water on the state of astronomical knowledge, oh dear no, to actually suggest that the current astronomical knowledge is faulty would get him into very big trouble with the scientific establishment. The problem is how to assimilate the observations into the accepted theories without having to admit they're wrong and having to reject them. And of course, these theories, relativity, the Big Bang and so on, are still in place. Six years after Maddox identified the Big Bang as thoroughly unsatisfactory, he wrote another editorial in which he examined results just in from the Hubble telescope. He wrote, The result, the third of its kind in under a year, makes a nonsense of the standard Big Bang view of how the universe began. Well, nonsense it may be, but the scientific establishment is still clinging on to it for dear life. As we saw in episode 5, the secular authorities have outlawed the scientific method's requirement that if evidence disproves a theory, it must be abandoned. In episode 22, we saw Thomas Kuhn point out that a theory can be declared invalid only 
if an alternative candidate is available to take its place. And we also saw in episode 5 that secular science has an a priori commitment, a commitment to materialism, and it cannot allow a divine foot in the door. So any candidate theory must be a secular humanist theory and definitely must not appear to confirm the Bible in any way. Secular scientists have had plenty of practice in fiddling, particularly mathematical fiddling to make their theories fit in with observations which actually disprove them. They've become masters at it. Brian G. Wallace threw some light on this in The Farce of Physics. The word scientist entered the English language in 1840. At that time, a handful of American scientists were taking steps to transform their status and image and separate themselves as professionals from those they considered amateurs. The major tactic used to create this artificial separation has been the elaborate use of technical jargon and complex mathematics. This erection of higher and higher barriers to the comprehension of scientific affairs is a threat to an essential characteristic of science, its openness to outside examination and appraisal. The scientific establishment gradually took over the whole practice of science as a secular humanist occupation and completely dominated it by the middle of the 20th century. The secular scientific establishment has become very skilled at hiding the reality about secular scientific theories behind technical jargon and complex mathematics so that few non-scientists can understand it. And scientists who do not willingly fit in with the secular humanist agenda, they control by denying publication in their privileged journals by denying appointments at scientific establishments, by denying Nobel Prizes, and even by denying or annulling qualifications earned by years of research. And what does all this tell us about the reliability of what they're telling us? Should we hold today's secular science in such high esteem that we believe it rather than the Word of God? Shouldn't we be concerned that the secular humanists are absolutely committed to excluding God and his word and to honour their commitments to materialism? Shouldn't we rather ask ourselves a question asked in Psalm 2? Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? Shouldn't we take note of Romans 1 verse 22? Professing themselves to be wise they became fools. Shouldn't we look a little deeper at what they've been telling us for all these years? Well, let's look a little deeper next time. Thank you for joining me for this episode. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe and press the bell so that you'll be notified as I release new movies. If you'd like to support this project, you're welcome to do so through Patreon. Find a link on my channel banner and in the description below.